Hi everyone and welcome back to the shop. My friends Jeff and Rob from Green Street Joinery and the American Craftsman Podcast are building solid pine doors for a project out in the Hamptons. So I thought we'd take a ride over to the shop and see how they build the doors from start to finish. Welcome back guys here at Green Street Joinery. I think it's been uh, a couple months since John was here last. Got some changes in the shop. We have a new machine back there, edge bander, new compressor and stuff. But um, we're working on some doors right now for a house out in Sag Harbor, Long Island, in the Hamptons. We're building some solid pine, it's clear Pennsylvania solid pine doors. So this is, uh, this is a piece of four quarter. This is what we're using for the panels. And we're using eight quarter for the frame of the door. Um, but we can joint this up and see what the wood looks like underneath. It all came in rough like this. So right now it's probably a little over an inch. This is, um, yeah, so it's an inch and an eighth by six. So this is what would be called four quarter by six. After the planer, once everything is planed to um, a little bit over thickness, so let's say we want this to be three quarters of an inch, you're gonna leave this. In pine, I'm probably gonna leave it at 13 16 because it's so soft and it sands really fast. A hardwood like oak, you know, it's, we're gonna leave it like a 30 second over, if that. Um, so now we'll sand both faces. You can see there's like a little bit of snipe right there. Um, that's the beauty of the wide belt is, you know, it, it preps the boards, it gets rid of the snipe if there is any. Once we have the straight jointed edge, now we can rip these to width. So for the, the frame of the door, we have eight quarter. The bottom rails work out to be seven and a half. And um, the styles and the top rail, mid rail worked out to be five. This is panel material and the panel is a V groove panel and it's four and a half inches on center. So we want to uh, rip this down to four and a half. We've already got our panels all glued up, and now Rob is ready to put the groove on. Ready to put the groove on, huh, Rob? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? Well, um, we, uh, we're going to use our Makita fence and uh, the Festool router. It, it rides just like the track saw, and we have a 60-degree bit. And uh, we talked about it, and we decided we would go about 3 16 of an inch deep. And uh, I'll show you what to do. Just bring it around here. So I've, I've set it on here and then I'll just sort of, because the pine's so soft, you can kind of see there's the tip of the bit. It's, it hits it. And, um, you know, just so you don't make any mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> While Rob's making this cut, I want to remind everyone that you can find links to the Green Street Joinery Instagram and the American Craftsman Podcast down in the description below. And you can visit Green Street Joinery's website at greenstreetjoinery.com. So you just saw how we created the panels. Before we cut any of this joinery, we have to have the panels made and to size because we need to set this groove, you know, to correspond to the size of that panel. So all these uh, rail parts and style parts are all milled to size. So we're inch and three quarter by five. And we actually ran these edges through the wide belt sander. You can see that's why we have you know, these little hairs. 
Um, that way these, when they go together, we won't have to try and sand up against the panel on these little, little edges here. So we're gonna come to the dado and we're gonna set our fence up to cut this groove and we're gonna, we're gonna run it twice. So here's our fence. And I had already run some of these, so I, I actually put a block where, where I need the fence to be. So I can just put it back to the same spot. Um, we're gonna run these twice because we want this groove to be perfectly centered. Our panel is three quarters of an inch, maybe just slightly less. I could try and shim the dado stack to exactly that dimension, but then I need to get these perfectly equal using the fence. So if we just run it twice, referencing both sides, you, know, you get a, a groove that's perfectly centered and we don't have to use a full width dado stack. So this dado stack right now is, I think, uh, 7 16 So we're making a 3 quarter inch groove with a 7 16 dado stack. Now that we've put the groove in all of the door frame material, we need to cut them to length and we have to figure out how long they need to be. So the easiest way I've found is you take two, two pieces of style material. These are rail material, but they're the same, same uh, dimension. So this door is going to be 24 and a half inches wide. We have our two styles, 24 and a half is here. Over here is how much we need to make up. So I have 14 and 9 16 because these are just a little bit under 5. I need to add an inch because we have a half inch 10 in that's going on either side. So I'll double check that measurement. We have 14 and 9 16 so we're going to cross cut these to 15 and 9 16 We cut the rails to length, so we have our top rail, groove only on one side, mid rail, we have the groove in two sides, and the bottom rail, obviously just in one side. So now we need to cut the tenons on these ends that are gonna fit into the groove here in our style. So the setup for that is, uh, we have the same dado stack in here at 7 16 Again, we can make this wider, but there's no sense in changing it out. And the, the easiest way I've found is to put a sacrificial fence on a miter gauge and add a, add a stop block. So this is going to put, use one of these smaller ones, this is going to put this right at a half inch because I want a half inch tenon. So again, it'll be a two pass cut. Um, and the goal is to just take off this dimension. So we wanna leave all of this meat here so that obviously it fits into the groove so I think I have this set at the right, the right height, but we'll, uh, we'll take a cut here and see. We'll use a test piece for that. Always keep your cutoffs to use for checking these. Nice and snug, not overly tight. Now I can cut it on these actual pieces.
So you saw how we just cut the tongues. This is all of our material prepared for the actual job uh, out in Sag Harbor. So all, here are all our rails and what we're gonna do now is add the dominoes. So we're, we're adding two 12 by 140 millimeter dominoes here. This stub tenon, it's just not large enough for a, a door. So rather than cut large tenons like this, we're actually using the domino to, to create these large tenons. So we need to put two in the end of each rail. Then uh, when we're ready to assemble, we can transfer these marks over and put them in the styles. To cut in these dominoes, obviously we need a domino cutter. This is the Domino XL. I think they call it the DF700. And this is something that we've wanted to buy for a long time. And this was the job that was you know, finally called for it in a, in a capacity where we, we felt comfortable buying it. So what I've done is I've laid out my reference marks on all these rails. We're coming in uh, an inch and five eighths from the edge. That gives us you know, a pretty nice layout there for both these mid rails and the um, top and bottom rails. So what I did is I, I put this piece on the bench and clamped it down so that I have something to push against. And I have this table actually pushed up against my bench. So we have it on the tight setting. We'll do the tight setting here. And when we get to the styles, we'll do the wide setting. We've cut all of the uh, domino tenons into the rails, so now we have our styles. These are long, so these right now, I believe, are about 86 inches long. These are custom doors, so they're, so these are long, about 86 inches, 85 and 7 eighths. Um, each door is a different size, so this door is a closet door. It needs to be 80 and a quarter inches. We're going to leave these long. There's no reason to cut them off now, so... Um, Kind of what I like to do is pull a measurement, so we'll come down, say, two inches. And this is going to be the top of the door. We're going to leave this two-inch horn up there. And if we need to be 80 and a quarter, we know that we need to come down here 82 and a quarter. Just square that across. We dry fit this door, you know, make sure that the top of the door lines up with this line and the bottom of the door lines up with this line. Um, can even come slightly past and we'll, we could trim it square later. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll just hang it just a hair past these. It'll give us a little bit of leeway that way. If we glue the door up out of square, which hopefully we don't, we have, you know, a place where we can trim it square. We laid everything out on the style. This is the mid rail. So what we need to do now is we need to transfer these marks over so that we can get, you know, the tenons to line up because the tenon is going to go into the style here. So easiest way to stand this up. See, there's some dust inside. We got the rails dry fit here into the style and we need to transfer these marks over. Well, I'm keeping all the marks on the face, so this is the, the good side of the, of the door. Not that the other side is bad, it's just not as good as the face. So we transfer these over. Right now I have 80 and 3 eighths, so I'm hanging a 16th over the top and a 16th over the bottom. And we can trim that up uh, after it's glued up. We'll stick the other style on here and we can transfer those over. Then we'll get into cutting these mortises.
So we transferred our marks over to the styles, and now it's time to route the mortises here. The Domino XL has the two settings for width, so we'll use the wide setting here. I'm not sure how true this is. John says people want to know where Rob is. Well, here I am. <laughs> Limited time. <only. laughs> That's right. So get it while you can. Um, Jeff showed you, you know, how we're going to fit these uh, parts together. They're dry fit again, uh, and I'm just going to pull some measurements. Uh, we know that we need to add an inch. I got 36 and 13 sixteenths. And I got a short memory, so I'm going to write that down. 36 and 13 sixteenths. Right on the spot that was standing for fitting. Yeah. And uh, 26 and an eighth. We'll put it on the table here. Got an inch, so that's 27 and an eighth for the bottom panel, and 37 and 13 sixteenths for the top panel. Now we're just going to cut it. Just a quick reminder, if you're looking for a good woodworking project that I think will inspire you to spend more time in the shop, check out my website for my professional woodworking plans. The step-by-step -step plans, along with my detailed video tutorials right here on YouTube, will help guide you through the project and help you build something that I know you'll be proud of. So I hope that you'll click on the link in the description down below or right here in the upper right-hand corner. So we've dry fit all of our doors and now it's time to prepare the rails for final glue up. Um, so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to glue these dominoes in. These are 12 millimeter thick and 140 millimeters long. Uh, we did have to trim these a little bit because we have this groove here. So this is actually, um, you know, it's making the mortise not, not as deep. Um, because we have this stub tenon and groove. So we cut these down to four and five eighths. We're going to be using Type Bond 3 to glue them in here uh, because it's a little bit thinner and it'll help them help them slide in. It's got a little bit of a longer open time. But when we do the final glue up, we'll actually use Type Bond 1 because it's going to have a better color match to pine um, versus the Type Bond 3. So go ahead and, and get these all glued in and then this door will be ready to be assembled. Seated. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a clamp on this now as I work my way down just to keep that nice and tight because um, I don't want it to tack up with the joint open at all. So you can see you've got some nice squeeze out. And if that starts to run, I can, can wipe it off. But yeah, we'll just work our way down. Once we have the rails glued into this style, uh, we can put our panels in with our panel buddies, and then we can put the, the next style on.
So before we put in the panels, these are uh, called panel buddies. They're just little foam spacers. Um, you might have heard of space balls. This is a similar thing. They're half inch by three quarters, so they work really nice in these three quarter inch uh, grooves we have here. So what this does is it allows us to undersize the panel to allow for expansion and contraction, but it keeps it tight. So it's summertime now. Uh, we're going to be compressing these, you know, halfway. So together we have about a half inch. So we removed uh, a quarter inch from the overall dimension here. Now we can put uh, panel buddies on top of the panel here and we can set the, you know, put our glue and set the style on top. So we just finished gluing up that door. We have another door here that we glued up uh, earlier today. It's been in the clamps for a couple hours, so it's, it's dry enough to come out now. So we'll pull off the clamps, we'll lay it down, and we'll cut it to size with the track saw. We're gonna cut the, the top of this door first. So we have a, a framing square that we keep in the shop that's nice and square. And um, this is an arbitrary cut. Obviously we wanna keep as much of this thickness as we can, so we'll just find you know, we can see we're like a 30 second out of square. So this is why we hang these past the line a little bit. So this line was um, in reference to the overall height. This door needs to be 80 and a quarter. So what I'll do is just get onto the entire piece, strike a line. That's enough to reference the track. I don't need to carry it all the way. So we'll cut this off and then we can measure down to the bottom and cross cut there. So there you have it. This door is, uh, it's all squared up. It's cut to length. We just have to do some finished sanding and we'll um, drill the hole for the handle and mortise in the hinges. Then it's ready for delivery. So we'll be bringing these out uh, next week. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope maybe you learned, learned a thing or two. It's always nice having John stop by and see, you know, how we do things because we bounce ideas back and forth. So there's always a lot to learn from anybody. Um, so yeah, if you want to see the finished doors, follow on Instagram, Green Street Joinery. All right, thanks. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It's always a lot of fun for me to hang out with Jeff and Rob from Green Street Joinery. Really talented woodworkers. And I've been talking with them about a new video series, tools, tips, and maybe even building a few projects with them. So if you have any ideas about tools, tips, or maybe some woodworking techniques, leave them in the comments down below. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.